I have powder on my head. <laughs> I have powder on my head for you, because the, the light will hit your faces and, you know. All I'm thinking back there is like, I got powder on my head and I'm gonna sweat, so I'm just gonna have like an avalanche of like powdered munchkins fucking rolling off my... I was checking out people walking in. There's some nice bald heads in here. Couple of good bald heads. Yes, that's right. Absolutely. Bald guys are always checking each other out. We are. We're checking out the back of each other's necks. That's our trouble area. <laughs> I was peeing in a fancy bathroom recently and there was a mirror looking at another mirror looking at the back of my head. I'm starting to get that eight pack of uncooked hot dog meat. You know, that like just, just loose head fat. I feel like I got a pug just like hanging out on my neck like at all times now. It's like, what the hell? Oh, that's yesterday's bagel. That's right. That's a problem for bald guys. We don't have exercises for the back of our heads, you know? That's there forever. What, I disagree aggressively now? Is that all I've got? It's like, ah. Oh. That move made me sweat. I was supposed to get thinner for this, but I didn't, so I bought a jacket. <laughs> I guess that's just what you do. You buy a jacket and... <laughs> I am eating still like it's the pandemic. Did, did anybody pick up eating like you were gonna be executed in the morning during the... Oh, man. There was a whole variant where I cut pie with a cookie for breakfast. <laughs> Apple pie and oatmeal raisin. I was like, that's it, that feels like breakfast food. Just lower my head and just shovel it. If we're gonna die, take a foot first, I thought, you know. Bald guys, we have to shave. When you, the first time, bald dudes, let me know. Did you start like shaving and like think like, do I keep going? Like, that's a thought. Every bald guy, the first time you shave your head, you're like, do I keep going? Like, I don't know. I look like a wolf with cancer when I take my shirt off. I'm the, I'm a, I look like a high school mascot at halftime with his head off. Just like, I just have like a felt, like a fuzz. It's gross. First time I shaved my head, I was like, shit, do I keep going? Because I was like 25 when I started going bald and like no girl wants to sleep with that guy. Just a wolf with no hair on his head, you know? But also you don't want to be the guy that shaves his chest. That guy's a knob, you know? Nobody likes him. It's like, which guy do I be, you know? But I shaved. I shaved my chest and I still do. Do you? You don't? <laughs> I still do because that's how my wife met me and I'm afraid if I stop, she'll leave. You know, like that could be the only reason why she's still here, you know? When I was young, shaving my chest, that was easy. That was like waxing a Corvette. Now it's like scraping bird shit off an old van. It's awful. Oh. There's all dents and lumps and duct tape on the headlights. It's bad. I used to have fitness goals. I used to have fitness goals. Now my goal is just that I don't want to look like white Shrek. That's pretty much all I want. I just, I look in a pond and I'm like, oh no. Turning into the, the cartoon. I got these big, stupid, heavy ears and two years of wearing a mask like pulled them further from my head. He's got like flutes now, like. <laughs> 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 
A kid recently told me I had young face on an old head. That felt nice. That's a good thing to hear about you. Young face, old head. Seven-year-old child told me that. Seven-year-old. When a seven-year-old tells you something terrible about yourself, you know it's true. Because, like, we can't tell kids how we really feel about them. But, man, if you have an insecurity, they'll cut you to watch you bleed. Like, they don't care. It's home run derby. They're swinging for the fences. They don't... You feel fat, there's a kid out there that'll be like, you look like a snowman. You're a... You're a sweaty snowman somehow. Thanks, pal. Appreciate it. I guess I'll throw out this white jacket. That's my favorite. <laughs> my buddy's kid, he goes, your head's old. I was like, nobody wanted you. How about that? <sighs> Have they told you that bedtime story yet, Benjamin? <laughs> you single-handedly ruined the hang for all of us, you... I like this rug. <laughs> buddy of mine had a pandemic baby. Anybody do it? Pandemic babies? Yeah. You did. You didn't know you could just uh, watch Sopranos again? <laughs> that's, that's okay. My buddy had a kid and he's not going to be a good dad. Have you guys seen, you, you meet a guy and he's a new dad and it's like, you're not going to be good at this. You're going to blow this. Why don't you give me that kid? I met with my buddy and his new son. Uh, we went to lunch and he plopped the kid on the table and he started using a booger sucker on the kid. Have you guys seen these things? If you haven't seen it, count your blessings. It's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. It's a siphon with a nipple on it and a filter. And parents put one end in the baby's nostril and then they suck the boogers out of the baby's nose. On the table at lunch, this dude's like cleaning house. And I used to do coke with this guy. I'm like, really? This is... This is you now? This is your relationship with nostrils and straws. You're taking, you're taking boogies out of little ones? Don't you go do that off the back of the toilet like a gentleman, like you used to. <laughs> And this kid had landscaper boogers, like big ones, like, you know, the ones that line the top? It's like, get that baby a neti pot. What is this? You got this kid clean in a basement? Yeah. They named their kid uh, Lando Lucas. What? Yeah. <laughs> Lando Lucas. Can you guess why? Star Wars. Star Wars geek, yeah. Lando Calrissian, George Lucas. You guys think that's okay to do? No. Name a kid after your favorite. I don't think I would name a kid after my favorite things. I'd be like, you want to meet my son, Sleep Parmesan Fenoya? Have you, uh... <laughs> Have you met my daughter, Xanax Breakfast Potatoes? She's, uh... She's a little sleepy and smelly, but, uh... Oh. It's weird. They sent a pregnancy announcement out to, to us when they announced Lando's birth. I hope this doesn't become a thing. It was weird. It came in like, like a wedding invite in the mail. Pregnancy announcement. Pregnant wife sitting there with big belly. All her friends around her with their hands on her belly, like, huh? <laughs> and on top it goes, guess who's expecting? And it's like, the pregnant one. That's, this is a, that's not a fun quiz at all. I, it's just weird. Guys aren't going to do that, right? We're not going to get around the expecting father and hold his cock like a softball trophy. Like, we did it. <laughs> The two tallest guys are on a knee holding balls, like fucking. These are championship balls right here. <laughs> oh, 
so good. Thank you. That's exactly what I needed right now. It's so strange. I don't want, we don't, I, I have an imaginary son. Um, if you haven't tried it, do it. I blame all my awful decisions on my imaginary son. I'm impulsive. I bought a pair of pants recently and I went home, I ripped the tags off, threw the receipt out, poured sauce on it in the garbage. I'm like, I'm never returning these pants. The next day I tried them on, I'm like, I'm way too fat for these stupid pants. Like, I don't. So I called the store. I'm like, my piece of shit son threw out the receipt and the tags. Can I return the pants? And they were like, no. And I was like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of that little fucker. I'm like, put him in the cage, honey. Lady on the phone's like, dude, bring the pants back. Fucking let the kid out of the cage. It's fucking... I'm like, That's right. You can go heavy on your imaginary kid. What are they gonna do? Call DCF? Like, I don't have a kid. You know? It's like, this was a test and you passed, DCF. Way to go. You did it. I don't think I want to have a child because I was so anxious as a kid. I was an awful student. I don't know if anybody else was really bad at school. I was anxious the whole time. Hangman was the worst. That game really messed with me. You guys remember that game? Who the f why was that ever okay for us to play? Children with like limited sense of fiction and consequence and such a weird thing. They would draw like a, like a medieval hanging device on the board and a bunch of dashes underneath. And you had to guess the word. And if you didn't guess the word, you murdered a man. Like you killed a guy. Collectively. Like you're all complicit. One dumb kid and everyone's guilty of accessory to a murder now. And it was never a quick death. Remember? They would draw like his big dumb head and a stick body. And if the teacher felt bad because you were doing horrible, they'd draw like sneakers on the guy. Remember like big, like big high tops. And a pilgrim hat, like tipped to the side. He was always wearing a pilgrim hat. I'm just torturing this dude because I don't know pneumonia has a pee in it. <laughs> Like, just erase the board. Get rid of them. I go home. My mom's like, you want a chocolate milk? I'm like, you better make it a double. <sighs> we lost a lot of good men today, Ma. I... <laughs> Mom. Mom's always there with the chocolate milk after you kill a couple guys, you know? Are there moms in here? Let's hear you. Where's the moms? Yeah. Happy early Mother's Day. Thank you. You're welcome. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> moms are the best. Moms, you're the most underrated people in the world. You have a kid and then you immediately take a back seat. It's not about you anymore. It's about the, unless you're a piece of shit mom, then go fuck yourself, really. Like, I don't. It, But if you're a good mom, you know, that's... And it sucks. I feel like moms are always getting the shaft. It's always about the kids. The kids, the kids, the kids. I saw a commercial recently for Crohn's disease. It, it wasn't like four... They weren't selling Crohn's disease. Like it was, I don't think anybody... I don't think anyone buy, would buy Crohn's disease. I think that's like you're shitting all the time. Like, you got to stay near your home because you could shit, like, at any time. <laughs> I think. That's what WebMD said when I looked it up, but... Middle school basketball game, little kid at the free, th free throw line ready to shoot foul shots, and they pan to the mom who's like visibly, painfully holding in a shit. Like, oh. So sad. She's got like her hand in her yoga pants and she's just like, you got this. You got this. It's the third quarter. Just fucking. She's like, I'm proud of you, baby. I'm... And the little kid's like, flip, taking his time, like, you know. And emergently, the mother darts out of the gym, races out, don't, throws the doors open. I'm guessing to let one loose because it's a shitting commercial, you know. 
And the kid sees it and gets sad and puts the ball down and it rolls away. And the announcer's like, don't let Crohn's disease ruin your child's life. <laughs> what the f Ruin your child's life? How do we forget about the victim in this commercial? <laughs> what about that amazing poor mother? Middle school best. She's got her knees in her ears right now shitting on a child toilet. Get this lady a trophy. That's mother of the year. That lady just saved that kid from being the kid whose mother shit in the gym. Like that's a, that's a social tattoo. That'll follow you to, that'll follow you to grad school. So moms, thank you for your service. We appreciate it very much. Yeah, you guys are unbelievable. Moms are great. Nanas are great. Grandmas are the best. I'm on the road a lot, and I get lonely, and sometimes you just want a hug, you know, from like a chubby old woman, <laughs> specifically. <laughs> right? Nothing beats the hug of just like a loose, chubby. Just get lost in there. You wonder why people on the road turn to drugs and all types of gambling. Like, hotels have so many amazing services. I'm in hotels all the time. 24-hour gym, all the f towels you want, all the food. Wouldn't it be great if hotels just had, like, a nana? Like, a <laughs> you're in some weird town, you call down to the front desk, and a neglected old lady just comes up to your room with juice and cookies, and you just fucking nod off in her lavender tits. Just, mm, just... You take Venmo, Nana? She's just like, shh. Go to sleep. And you just fart and go to sleep. My wife and I don't want to have kids. We don't want to ruin our dog's life. So we want to, yes, yes. Dogs over people, yeah? All right. Fantastic. You got a dog? You went pretty nuts. Two? Right on. What kind of dogs? Beautiful. Nice. What do I have? Thanks for throwing it back. Uh, you're clearly not a grandmother. I had a 100-pound Mastiff that we had to put down during... I know I loved her, but she lost all my money in crypto. So I was like... You, No. No, she was sick. Putting a dog down is the worst. I don't know if anybody's had to do it. It's the worst thing in the world. Devastating. One of my buddies tried to make me feel better. He goes, at least it's not like a family member died. I was like, dude, there are so many humans in my family I would have rather put down than that dog. <laughs> yeah. I could think of two aunts and a dad I'd push in front of a bus for one more hour. One more game of fetch. <laughs> we got a new one, though. We got a beautiful little yellow lab pit, beagle mix, some train wreck of a <laughs> big dumb ears. I love her. I love her so much. Sometimes I think I love her more than I love my wife. <laughs> and I know my wife loves the dog way more than she loves me. Like, it's... it's like, sex with my wife has just become foreplay for petting the dog now. <laughs> You dog owners know what I mean. The minute we're done, I'm like, bring me that dog. Get her over here. Put her on my sweaty belly. I'm just dabbing sweat with her big ears. Just... Remember those old movies? They'd light a cigarette and look cool after sex. I'm just petting a puppy with a shaky hand. Like, bring us a Gatorade. My electrolytes are low. <laughs> I could pinpoint the moment that I realized I loved the dog a little bit more. My dog sleeps in between my wife and I, on her back, head level, sprawled out, comfortable, and she snores like a dying old alcoholic man. Like, it's like zombie sleep apnea. She, I've never heard noises like this. She's like, wah, eyes are open, like paws are going. 
I love it. I can't get enough. I'm laying on my pillow like, I gotta get this dog a TikTok. This is amazing. <laughs> and then my wife, my wife rolled over and made one little noise. She was just like <laughs> and I'm just staring at her furious. Like if she doesn't, <laughs> if she doesn't shut the hell up, I'm gonna ball up every dirty sock, cram it in her mouth. It's gonna wake the dog up. I like put my beats on the dog playing tranquil music. I'm like, you guys have those like obnoxiously named overpriced doggy daycare places around here? Those dumb names. Do you guys have any? Yeah. Yell them out. What's the names of the places? Dogtopia. I was in Boulder, Colorado. They had one called Bonjour. And it's like. I bring my dog to a place, 50 bucks to bring her to hang out for the day. And then they text me like they, to guilt me into buying add-ons for her. They send me a picture of her, she's all sad. The other dogs are in the back like fucking and drinking and smoking cigarettes. My dog. Like... <laughs> dog's doing a keg stand. They text me, for $15, you could get your dog a compassionate CBD paw rub. I'm like, can you just make sure she doesn't eat shit? That's like really all we want. She doesn't need 12 minutes in the heated pool with a snuffle pad. Just please keep her out of traffic. That's all we want. We get pictures of her with like a unicorn horn sucking on a glow stick. I'm like, you give her ecstasy? Like, what is this? Is Burning Paw today at Bark Avenue? <laughs> I know my neighbors by their dog's names. Like, I don't know my neighbors. You guys know what I mean? I'm like, I'm like, oh, there's Maggie and the asshole that walks her. I hate that guy. He never says anything good. <laughs> she's a good pup and I got a great wife 10 years married to my wife she's a nurse practitioner fought the good fight for all of us yeah. amazing woman boy I'll tell you everyone was so great to the nurses during the pandemic man you guys were awesome we were in New York and everybody was standing on their stoops banging pots and pans calling her a hero. We appreciated it. I booed her every night when she got home. I, uh, I just wanted to keep her honest. You know what I mean? Like, you guys build her up. I got to keep her sharp for us, you know? I don't need her peacocking around the kitchen all tits forward, you know? I got to make sure she's tight. She'd come home after a long shift. She'd be like, we saved 31 people today. And I'm like, I read 4,000 died. So I don't know, babe. <laughs> like, you may want to keep those scrubs handy, pumpkin. I, uh, I don't hear no bell, Mick. I didn't say that. I sprayed her in the face with Lysol and hit under the kitchen table like a <laughs> giant baby. Lighting matches, trying to land them in her Crocs. Make noise if you're a nurse. Where are you? Nurses in here? Yeah, anybody? Oh yeah? Fantastic. Is this your guy? What do you do, sir? <laughs> Don't ruin my fucking special. <laughs> I'm just gonna insert a thing, so. I drive a truck. Okay, truck driver. We got that? I wish every day was a special. You just make shit up. So she's a little smarter than you. Yeah. I hear you, bro. I'm picking up what you're putting down. 
My wife's getting smarter and smarter right in front of me, and I'm not. I'm not. She's a cancer surgeon's nurse practitioner. Yeah. And I sit at home and watch cartoons and listen to The Grateful Dead. Yeah, it's important, but... I just, I'm not keeping up with the conversations. Like, I'm, she tells me shit about work, and I'm like, can you call someone you work with? Like, <laughs> she, tells, she tells me stories. Like, she thought I was like, I was there handing her a scalpel all day. I'm like, you remember when I wasn't there the whole time? Like, I just throw things I heard on commercials back at her to keep up. I'm like, how was your day? She's like, oh, we had to palpate the sutures on a Whipple. And I'm like, that sounds moderate to severe right there. I think that's... That is textbook plaque psoriasis, if I have ever heard. They should ask their doctor or pharmacist if AstraZeneca can help. They might lower their copay. I'm hypochondriac. I have everything. I have everything. I die of 10 things a day. Everything her patients have, I have. Like, I hear the word, and I'm like, yeah, I'll die from that, totally. I had pancreatitis the other day. <laughs> she said the word, and I'm like, yeah, I'll die. Totally, that'll kill me. I just started holding my back. Like, I just was in the middle of her story. I'm like, oh, yeah, shit. That's... It's no joke, that pancreatitis. <laughs> she goes, that's not even where your pancreas is. And I'm like, oh, it's radiating, okay? It's clearly advanced and it's probably in the lymphatic region now so you should give me some Advil and... I feel bad for her I'm not easy it's a great part of a relationship when you can show each other your messed up shit you know what I mean you guys I hope you're in a relationship because he's had your knee pretty locked down for are you at that point, say you're watching TV and you got some weird thing on your foot, can you like dangle it in her face and be like, is that cancer, babe? Is that, can you feel this lump? That's true love. I show my wife everything, everything. And I couldn't show her things during the pandemic because she was like in the COVID, like full beekeeper, like the whole nine yards, you know? So we had to, she was in one bedroom, I was in the other and I couldn't show her thing. I was, She's saving lives, and I'm an out-of-work comic at home with crippling anxiety and Google. <laughs> Bad combination. My Google searches before the pandemic were unbelievable. I was like, can I smoke Molly, Google? Then the pandemic starts. I'm like, one hand is warmer than the other, Google. What, what variant is this? Do I rub elderberry on it, or...? too late. I didn't know what to do. I don't know if you guys remember, but early on in the pandemic, they said, like, exercise, keep your lungs healthy, in it, and you won't get COVID. Remember that crap? <laughs> That's, that fake news was brought to us by Big Peloton, I think. <laughs> I bought an exercise bike the minute I heard that. I put it in the house against the wall and I pedaled it like it was Wizard of Oz. Like I was stealing purses in the 1940s. I'm just like. I rode it so hard, I gave myself a hemorrhoid. This was the. That's how I started the pandemic. Young guys in here, do you even know what a hemorrhoid is? Oh. Kiddos, listen, it's the worst. It's like a purple Advil grows out of your asshole. And it feels like 90,000 bees are stinging you all at once right on your ass. And I was like, oh, this is it. This is how I die. My ass is going to eat me from the bottom up and I can't even go to the hospital. It's COVID. Just panicking, pacing, Googling. I couldn't show my wife. Normally I would have shown her, I just would have woken her up from a nap and been like, babe, is this for just grandfather clocking her? <laughs> Bing bong. Bing bong. 
hit snooze. You're like, is that normal? <laughs> so I text her and I go, I think my asshole's trying to kill me. And she goes, send me a video of it. She goes, send me a video of it. I never even sent her a picture of, like, and now I gotta send her an, an asshole movie? Like, I gotta... Why'd she skip over pictures? It took me nine takes. I have, like, eight, I have, like, director's cut, DVD, like, commentary, Blu-ray. I put the phone on the toilet seat and, like, entered the room, like, oh, oh, I didn't see you there, like... It's like presenting, like it was like Animal Planet. <laughs> Moving stuff out of the way. One video was just all ceiling. I don't even know how I wasn't in it. I was like, how the hell? Just all cheek and hair. I was putting like sepia tones in the dog ears on Instagram. And finally I got a good one. I was like, mwah! I'm sending this to a film festival. <laughs> I sent it to her, and the minute I hit send, I'm like, I can never leave this woman. This is it. <laughs> She's got a video of my asshole at its worst. I mean, like, that's a vow. That's the ring we should give each other when we get married. It's a picture of our assholes at its worst. I guarantee the divorce rate will drop if we do that. Thanks. I don't know how she puts up with me. We had to leave the city and move to the suburbs during the pandemic and we had to live around rich people. And uh, I grew up poor. I don't really know how to be around rich people. No offense if you're rich, I don't like you much. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's hard to talk to you. One of the neighbors was so obnoxious with his wealth. He would use seasons as verbs when you talk to him. He goes, we summer in the Cape. Can <laughs> we winter in Aspen? I'm like, go to hell. How about that? Can you go, go summer in hell for a little bit? He goes, where do you summer? I'm like, in front of a fan. Uh, <laughs> dependent upon the humidity, but a lot of August I'm oscillating. I don't know about you. I never got to summer anywhere because my parents would spring into financial decisions <laughs> and we would fall flat on our faces. So bring me back some taffy from the Cape, Jeff with a G, you piece of shit. I'm gonna let my dog ruin your lawn. It's weird going from the city to the suburb. I never owned, a, I don't know how to own anything. I'm around all these professional homeowners and I'm just like, I don't know how I fake it. It made me so anxious and so nervous. One day I was just standing outside of the house looking at it like, why'd the bank give us this? <laughs> just staring at it like, how do I take care of this thing? It could have been a minute, a year. I have no, long, no idea how long I was out there, but my neighbor just showed up. And he's like, what do you do? I call my, that neighbor Street Dad. I got a guy named Street Dad. I borrow all his shit. He just like showed up. He's like, what are you looking at? And I, I, I wish I was honest. I wish I was like, I'm afraid. I don't know. I'm not ready for this. Can you please make sure I don't burn this down? Instead, I panicked and I tried to sound cool. I'm like, I think I'm going to switch to natural gas. I don't even know what that means. Like, I don't have a clue. I'm just going to switch. He looks at me, he's like, dude, we're, we already have natural gas. <laughs> I had my out, I had my out, but I had to double down. And I'm like, no, no, like more natural. Like I wanna have the most natural <laughs> gas on the street. He goes, you mean like propane or something? And I went, my tummy hurts. And I ran inside and I'm just, I've been hiding from him ever since. I don't know. If he's, I look through the blinds. I'm like, is he out there? I gotta stay inside. I don't know how to do it. 
I hate moving. I hate moving. I don't know if anybody's moved recently. It sucks to move. I have a weird thing I can't... I realized this last move. I don't know how to properly dispose of a crucifix. Is this anything? I don't know what to do. How many of you are raised Catholic? Who was raised Catholic? And who's not anymore? What'd you do with all your old Jesuses? I don't know what to do with these Jesus. I have, I've accumulated, I have a Timberland work boot shoe box with nine Jesuses. I have a baseball team of Jesuses <laughs> that I've accumulated over the years in a, in a box in the back of my closet. And every time I move, I'm like, fucking, uh, the, the Jesuses. <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. I want to leave them in the next place I move from. So the people that move in are like, did a, did a vampire hunter live here? Is this, <laughs> is this Van Helsing's old place? I don't know what to do with them. One guy told me, throw them out. And I'm like, no, I'm not throwing out nine Jesus. I'm not religious, but I totally believe in bad luck. You know what I mean? If I throw out nine Jesuses, when I die, he's going to be the real one. Like, there's no way. I ain't going to be Buddha or nothing. I'm going to get up there. He's going to be like, no room at the end, dude. You're fucked. You threw out nine of me. I want to carry him around with me and like when a lady's bugging out at a coffee shop because there's too much like oat milk in her latte or whatever, just want to slide a Jesus to her. <laughs> like, looks like you need him more than I do right now, man. <laughs> just back my way out of there. If it was a Buddha, it's easy. You put it on the curb and a divorced white woman will build a yoga studio around it, you know? But <laughs> Nobody wants a jaybird. There are pros to living in the suburbs, I guess. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a germaphobe, and uh, the city's disgusting. <laughs> New York City's gross. They have a rat czar now, so fingers crossed, I guess. Well, I'm real bad with germs. One time I gave a homeless man a bacon, egg, and cheese, and I was like standing there, and he went to shake my hand to say thanks, and I was like, no, no, we're good. This is, <laughs> this is where our transaction ends. <laughs> And I turned to walk away and he grabbed my hand when I wasn't looking and he had like a, like a hobo aju, like he had like a, like a, like a bum juice. I could still feel it. It was something like, it's like a film. And I didn't have hand sanitizer, but I had a lighter and I just like rotisserie, like, cooked, like just popping bum germs. He's like, I gotta get out of this city. It's quicker to do things out here in the suburbs. You go want a coffee, Dunkin' Donuts, in and out, bang. Yep. New York's a pain. You wanna get a coffee, you gotta tiptoe into these little alchemist boutique coffee shops and meet the beans and greet the beans and take a quiz on the beans. You ask for a straw, they look at you like you touch children or something. <laughs> Like, I don't want to learn about Arabica. I want to shit in 11 minutes. That's the only reason why I'm here. Let's expedite this, please. This is a borderline emergency situation here. I got a turtle head. The thing I don't like about living in the suburbs is you got to talk to people. New York City, it's great if you don't want to talk to someone and they you start banging your head against shit and they leave you alone. It's like you just... I was like, excuse me, sir, what do you, I'm like, ah, 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 and just boom, hit fucking headbutton mailboxes. And... But in the suburbs, people trap you, man. Grocery stores, gas stations, people just get you and they like set a pick and they just tell you about the five things they memorized off Facebook that day and it's like, it's weird. I meet everyone's anger with weird. That's what I, that's my mechanism in the suburbs. God, one more person talked to me about the price of gas while I was pumping gas. I was gonna spray him in the mouth with gas. Like I'm so, like those are balloon clown carnival heads. I didn't bring the gas. I have nothing to do with this. I gotta pay for it too. These angry guys looking around the corner of their tank like, oh, good thing you got a four cylinder. It'll cost you $500 to fill that up in this economy. And I'm like, 
Yeah, I know, and I got 10 dead bodies in the trunk, so I'm carrying some weight. You... <laughs> and looking like I think Biden stole the election, I get a lot of these like lean in, whisper white guy confessional conversations. <laughs> Old white dudes who wanna tell me, they think I think how they think just cause we got the same head. They make sure it's clear, and then they tell me how they really feel. They're like, these snowflakes are really ruining the country, huh? And I'm like, I know, my black husband said the same thing. You guys are... Get away from me. He's like, I don't know what to think. You're white, but you, you look like me, but... I just don't care. I don't care. I don't believe in politics. I don't want to talk about it. You know, like, it doesn't matter to me. My grandparents raised me to vote for the presidential candidate that you'd like to be your next door neighbor. In theory, and I guess it's cute, but in reality, I don't know. Biden or Trump, next door neighbor? I think I'd rather burn my house down. That's a weird street. I got Biden wandering into my garden at four in the morning and like aviators in a bathrobe, just like smelling flowers. It's like, get him out of here. He's doing it again. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump's trying to fuck my wife in front of me, denying it. He's like, that's Marla. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what are you doing? He's like, that's fake dick. Don't worry about that. That's, that's her fault. I don't like any of it. I don't like where we're at. We all have PTSD. We have post-Trump stress disorder, for sure. The whole world does. And it's, you know what? I'm not even talking about the people who don't support him. I think people who supported Trump probably have the most PTSD. That's a hard gig. I voted and then just forgot about it. Jeez, you Trump supporters, man, you guys signed up for like a gig. Like you got, it's like a membership. You gotta get merch. You gotta go to marches and Constantly be angry? It seems exhausting. I don't know how you do it. Just wake up and like, who do we hate today? Who do we like today? Must have been a weird day for Trump supporters to wake up and be like, really, the My Pillow guy? That's our guy now? All right. My Pillow guy. Okay. Wish I didn't get this Pence tattoo, but all right. I think the funniest thing he did during this presidency was when he called the CEO from Apple, Tim Apple. It's still my favorite thing ever. Leader of the free world. He went first name company the guy works for. That's how we have people in our phones when we don't know their last name. Right? I have Sue Dog Lady in my phone because Sue's the dog lady. You know what I've never called her? Sue Dog Lady? I just call her Sue. She seems to get it. I've just decided that all I want to do, I'm 43, it's not old, I'm aging like guacamole, like it's happening fast. It really is. But you know what I'm trying to do? This is it. I just want to age where I don't hate things that I don't understand. Does that make sense? I feel like a lot of people just hate what they don't get. Like you get to a point where your lives are so much different. You guys, you're so like young. One day people are gonna be like, what'd your grandparents do for a living? And the answer's gonna be like, oh, my grandmother had hot feet. <laughs> you know? She killed it on OnlyFans, man. It was. How weird is that? Like, oh, what's your grandfather do? He's like, oh, he played Fortnite on Twitch. I don't, I don't even know what those words mean. But I don't hate it. There's a girl right now, a reality TV star. She's selling her farts in a jar. Heard about this? She made $200,000 last year. Selling her farts in a jar. I don't understand it. I'm not mad at her, I'm kind of jealous. I gotta be honest. I got a lot of farts. 
They want her farts because she's a cute girl. No one wants my farts. No one wants me on the jar, like... <laughs> Lactose intolerant since 1979. <laughs> Yogurt allergy. <laughs> but as an older dude, I'm like, how do I break into the fart business? You know what I mean? I would ghost fart. Like, would she ever, like, outsource some of that fart business to a guy like me? I'll do an 80-20 split. I don't care. Can't take it. You give me a ham sandwich and a glass of milk, I'll fill a whiskey barrel full of product. <laughs> People are home waiting for her farts to come in the mail, and they just... Like, Woo! She needs a colonoscopy. It smells like Thanksgiving dinner in there. I know. You could taste that joke. People get mad. I had a, a guy called me I went to high school with because our mascot got changed. Did anybody else's mascot get changed in here? What was yours? You were the Red Men? Oh, yeah. I kind of get it. tough one. I could see that, yeah. We, we, got, we were the smallpox blankets, so it was time. It was, it was well overdue. No, I'm kidding. We were the Indians. And someone, my buddy calls me and he goes, yo, we're not the Indians anymore. And I was like, we were never the Indians, dude. Fucking, your last name's Antonucci. Why don't you calm down? call you when we need to protest the changing of a pizza box, all right? You save your energy. He's like, what are we gonna do? It's like, we've never been on a helmet. I don't know how it feels. When they put a fat, bald Italian on Zoloft on a helmet, then I'll have an opinion, you know what I mean? Until then, there's other shit to worry about. I got into a conversation about cancel culture recently and about how people who have been canceled, their TV shows aren't on anymore. And it's not fair to the other actors because they're getting fucked over. Cause, like the Cosby show. Obviously, Bill Cosby, huge piece of shit. But what about Theo and Rudy? And <laughs> what about them? Alvin was working at Trader Joe's for a while. You remember, like, Denise's boyfriend? That's not fair to him. But just because Cosby's a you know, garbage person, you... They should make an app for canceled people. Like Hulu, but we'll call it, who knew? You know, it is... <laughs> and all the money goes to all the good people on the show, you know what I mean? And the logo's just the guy like, I don't know, wait a second. I get to travel around a lot and do shows. I, I was in New Orleans recently, and uh, I was, we were in a theater that was haunted, and then we went and visited a haunted mansion. You guys into haunted stuff? You guys like ghosts and all that? We went to this old mansion, a bellhop, 100 years ago, went up to the attic, never came down, and now at Mardi Gras, he like floats by the window and throws beads for tits and shit. That's a cool ghost. I like old ghosts, you know? I like these lighthouse ghosts and think about how lame ghosts are going to be in like two or three hundred years when we're all dead gen z ghosts gen X, hipster ghosts not scaring anybody just needly annoying hauntings like one scooter riding itself down the street you wake up all your k-cups are cold brewed and your <laughs> wi-fi passwords complicated All your Rolling Stone albums are now the Lumineers or some shit. <laughs> Walk into a building in 200 years, like, if there are any ghosts in here, please identify yourself. And the ghosts are like, um, I don't really identify as a ghost, actually. Uh, I'm dimension neutral, thank you. So, if you could stop spirit shaming, I would really appreciate it. Uh, 23 and Me was a thing that my buddy was talking about. I have a friend who did it. And uh, think about how many deadbeat dads and grandfathers are pissed off that that was invented. 
How many dudes were just like settling into the rocking chair of their life? Like, I did it. My two families don't know about each other. <laughs> and then the phone rings. Hi, are you John? You don't know this, but you knocked my grandmother up in Boulder, Colorado in 1971. The guy just hangs up the phone, walks into traffic. He's like, I don't have it in me. <laughs> really? I gotta go meet you at a diner in Jersey? Why? Your grandmother was hot. Fucking get over it. I think it's hilarious that this is what we do with our money in this country. We like, we, everyone's poor, but we spit in a cup. We pay a guy to let us spit in a cup and we mail it to them. And then we go, where are we from? <laughs> Just... <laughs> and then we believe whatever they send us. <laughs> we know nothing about the guy who gets our spit. I hope the guy that gets our spit's just a drunk guy with darts and a map, just fucking with us, you know? It's a bottle of Jameson, a globe, some darts. He's like, Ashley, huh? Let's see where you're from. Ah, oh, you're Brazilian. Enjoy, Ashley. Now Ashley's putting pineapples in her rice pilaf and shit. She's like, I gotta celebrate my heritage. <laughs> hundred bucks to take that test. I'm not paying a hundred dollars to find out I'm an eighth Norwegian. I don't care. What difference does that make? I don't care where I'm from. I want to know why I am. I'll pay for that. I'm riddled with anxiety. I'll scream in a bag and mail it to you if you can tell me why I'm scared of mirrors. How about we all yell out our prescriptions and really get to know each other? What do you say? Are we at that point? On three, let's do it. One, two, three. Adderall. Adderall. <laughs> Heard that one. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I'll share too, I don't mind. Right now, Zoloft and ketamine. Yeah. Double, I'm hitting it hard. I have treatment, I have treatment resistant depression. It's not a big deal, it just means my depression's a little tougher than yours. No big deal. I tried three medicines, it didn't work. So they call that treatment resistant. All it means is that I have like a ceiling on how happy I could be. It's not a big deal. I'm just not gonna get as happy as some other people. I'm not gonna dunk. I don't have the emotional ups to dunk. Like, I'll hit some layups along the way and maybe a three. I like to give assists, that's why I do this. So you guys could be happy and, but I'm never gonna dunk. It's okay, I, I'm just, all that means is like, I'm never gonna dance sober at a wedding. Like, <laughs> that's all. I'm not gonna be excited to wear matching pajamas for a Christmas card. Like, I just don't have that in me. I'm like, oh fucking, no. I'll just stand on the side and be like, fuck that. <laughs> I took uh, Ritalin for a while for ADD. Does the Adderall help you? Yes. Yeah? It helps me focus, but I still have no control over what I focus on. <laughs> I take these pills, they help me focus, but I'm out of control. I'm like, how am I supposed to write jokes when I haven't named all my dishes yet? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> Get your head in the game. Before medicine, I tried other, I tried illegal shit. I'd self-medicate with Coke. I tried that. I was never good at Coke. I would just do it and then plan businesses that I was never gonna, you know. <laughs> I still think Topless Tapas would be an unbelievable restaurant chain. That's, it's big tits, small bits. Can you see that sign on, on 95? What's the weirdest thing I've ever done on Coke? Excellent question. I took the, one time I took the law school entrance exam on Coke, cause you were there. We were doing lines off the prep test book. It was the biggest book we could find. I mean, I did it, opened the book, started taking the test and I aced it. Like I, I could have got into Yale with this score. So I was all yipped up, smoking a cigarette, watching the sunrise. I'm like, maybe I should go to law school. 
And then I thought about it. That's a crazy commitment. Three years of Coke? Who the hell's going to pay for that? That's... <laughs> can't get that at the bookstore with the FAFSA. I go to therapy. Clap if you go to therapy. Let's hear it. Where are you? Yeah. Thank God for therapists. I have a great one now. I, you got to be mature enough for the relationship, I think. I got kicked out of one when I was 19. Beautiful woman, short skirt, high boots, her and I alone in the room. And she's like, this is a safe space. You can talk about anything you want. And I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> you kidding me? Was Chris Hansen in the hall? Is this a trap? I seen Dateline. She goes, you seem distracted. I'm like, have you seen you today? Like, I want to smell your boots. Let's get into this. She's like, get out. I have a great one now, though. It's, 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 if you guys are looking for a job, go into therapy. It, it's job security. Any young people, go do it. Everyone's in therapy that I know. I have a buddy that's 45, he's in therapy because of a blown eighth grade birthday party. He invited a girl that he liked and she didn't show and it like tweaked him. And, and, and he's paying $150 a week to talk about it. That's a my generation thing, you know? I don't know. My, my dad never went to therapy. My dad, when he was 12, he had to drive my blind grandfather to the racetrack to bet the ponies. 12 years old, driving a Lincoln up and down. 95. He's never once said a bad thing about my grandfather ever. Now I'm in therapy. Like, my dad was at my football games, but was he really at my football games? Like, was he there? Just trying to get healthier, trying to get better. I quit cigarettes recently. That was a fun thing that I did. Yeah, that was fun. Yep. Is anyone still smoking in here? Anybody? No? You are? Oh, can I smell your fingers after the show? God, I miss that smell. I don't know. It's cool. Kids, don't smoke, but definitely don't vape. Because if you vape, it's awful for you, but you also look like a fucking idiot. I'm sorry. No offense to anybody who vapes, but you look like you're sucking on a garage door opener. It's the stupidest thing. You look like a tall baby with a 9-volt battery in your mouth. And your brain's on fire. You ever, like, driving behind someone and a plume of root beer comes out of their car and... You hope they get T-boned at the intersection? <laughs> when I was trying to quit cigarettes, my buddy goes, vape to quit. And I did research. It causes a disease called popcorn lung. That's a real disease. What a lame <laughs> disease to die from. Sounds kind of fake. It's like, I drank too much kombucha. Now I've got yoga liver. Like, it's like, man. How am I supposed to look my grandfather in the eyes and tell him I got popcorn lung? from too much Fruity Pebble flavored vape juice. <laughs> Guy's been smoking Camel Unfilters for like 300 years. <laughs> He's like, what do you have, snack chest? Are you serious? <laughs> Go get mesothelioma like a real man. <laughs> but that's it, just trying to get better, healthier, nicer. Trying to be nicer to everybody, my wife in particular. I, I snap, react and regret is my life. Anybody else react and regret? Yeah, it's the worst. I do it all the time. I did it to my wife on our wedding day. You know when you're at a wedding and there's the table where the bride and groom sit and everybody else is out having fun? You know, they walk by, they're like, you look great. And I'm like, we invited you? I don't She turns to me and she goes, did you notice that I got your, your ring engraved? And I said, no. And I took it off and I looked. She got, don't let me down. Oh. Engraved inside my wedding ring. In my wedding ring, it says, don't let me down. I flipped. I was like, I don't even know you that well. Are you serious with this shit? Like, don't let you down. I'm, I'm going to let you down. This lets me down. I don't even know if I love you. I'm just scared to die alone. So tell everybody to go home. I don't need to. She goes, Jesus, Mike, relax. It's, it's the Beatles song, Don't Let Me Down. Yeah. Played on our first date. And I thought it would be romantic Aww. to get in your ring. <laughs> I was like, wow, that didn't take long, did it? I really let you down, huh? That's, that's my bad. 
Guys, I can't thank you enough for coming out and being such an unbelievable crowd. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much.